All right, elasticity of demand. So what we have going on in this problem is we're given a demand function. So sometimes these are called just Q for quantity or D of P, these mean the same thing. But in our case, this is the square root of 325 minus 3P. All right, we are asked to find the elasticity of demand at a specific price of $10. So we have our formula for elasticity of demand. It's gonna be our price divided by the quantity multiplied by the derivative of Q with respect to P. So this is the same thing as um, D prime of P in our situation, evaluated at 10. So to get going on this, kind of the components that we need to collect. We know that our price is 10, so that's given to us. The quantity is gonna be the same thing as the demand at $10. So substituting that into our function, we have the square root of 325 minus three times 10. So that's the square root of 325 minus 30 is 295. So that's gonna be our value we plug in for Q. Now we need to calculate dq dp. And remember we said that's the same thing as the derivative of d with respect to p. All right, so to do so, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first think about this as being raised to the one half power. So our original function 325 minus three p all raised to the one half power. What that's going to allow us to do is use the chain rule with the power rule. All right, so this derivative is gonna be bring the exponent down, one half comes down in front. You keep what's on the inside the same, 325 minus three P. We reduce the exponent by one. So one half minus one is negative one half. And then we still have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of 325, a constant is gonna be zero, the derivative of minus 3p is going to be negative 3. I'm going to rewrite this so that we have a positive exponent as opposed to that negative exponent. So this will be the same thing as we can keep the 1 in the numerator. The negative 3 will be in the numerator. The 2 from the 1 half goes to the denominator. But then we can move the 325 minus 3p down to the denominator by making that a positive 1 half for our exponent. Um, finally, what I would probably do before I substitute in my 10 is I would think about this as negative three over two times the square root of 325 minus three P. That one half of course can be rewritten as a square root. All right, so that's still the derivative of P. We want to evaluate that at a, at a price of $10. So we're gonna say the derivative evaluated at 10 is going to be negative 3 over 2 times the square root of 325 minus 3 times 10 is going to be negative 3 over 2 times again this is the square root of 325 minus 30 is 295. All right now we just need to substitute into our elasticity of demand formula over here e of p is gonna be the absolute value of P we said was 10, Q we said was the square root of 295 multiplied by, um, we have negative three divided by two times the square root of 295. Close off some absolute value signs. Now, as far as simplifying down goes on this, we can go ahead and combine a few things together. We could say 10 times negative three is negative 30 for our numerator. And then we have a two in our denominator. But as we multiply the square root of 295 times itself, another square root of 295, this works out to be 295 without a square root over top. We could reduce this down a little bit more and say maybe negative 30 divided by two is negative 15. We are eventually gonna get this into our calculators to evaluate it. Um, the result is going to turn out being positive because it's an absolute value. And this one works out to be 0 0.050847 dot, dot, dot. So it keeps going. Now what we want to do is figure out, all right, is this inelastic, unitary, or elastic? So what we're doing is we're comparing the value that came out here to one. Because this is less than one, we're gonna call this inelastic. 
All right. Whenever it's less than one, what that means is if you increase your, uh, for every 1%, you raise your prices, demand will decrease by 0.5 dot, dot, dot percent. All right. So we should be increasing our prices All right, if this were to actually come out an equal one, we would refer to that as being unitary, which means we've got the price the exact right amount. All right, we shouldn't increase or decrease our prices. If the value that came out as we evaluated this inelasticity of demand was greater than one, what that tells us is it's elastic and we should reduce our prices in order to maximize our profits. All right, I hope this helps out. Um, a little bit of work going into this, but you know, take it one step at a time. What you want to do is make sure you know your price, evaluate that to get your quantity that's going to be sold, and then take the derivative of your demand function and plug in your value, get some number coming out here, plug them all one at a time into your formula, and then get out that calculator and compare it to one. See if it's smaller than one, bigger than one, or equal to one. All right, hope this helps.